All right, I'm gonna do my first unedited video today. Cause screw it, I'm fishing a brand new body of water. This is a tidal area in southeastern North Carolina. Um, I don't know if I'll find any red drum, but uh, I'm here for the first time. Been through this area I don't know, probably five years ago. I didn't fish it, so I just kind of cruised through it. Hopped on the EPDL, and let's learn it together, right? This should be fun. I'm hoping this will be fun. Um, <laughs> it's not edited. Uh, why am I doing it on edited? Well, um, I figured uh, I'm gonna, I want to try something different, right? I think this will be interesting to see how to piece it together. We'll talk a bunch together. Maybe you'll hate me by the end of this video. Maybe you'll hate me even more by the end of this video, or maybe, maybe we're gonna have a good time. So it's gonna be kind of like a, a ride along fishing trip. So I'm on this EPDL, I'm gonna strap it on, strap the camera on, and uh, really, it's mid February. I'm in a dry suit, the water's 49. Um, you can call this a scouting trip, sure, that makes some sense, or more or less, this is a trip where I'm gonna be happy if I catch anything. Right? And let's get this camera on me and let's start fishing. I don't know where we're gonna fish and what we're gonna fish for, but um, I got a little bit of a bay up here. I've got a couple hours of incoming tide, then I'll get the outgoing tide, but I've only got about three, four hours to fish. Gotta let the dog out and then pack for the Everglades. So. <clears throat> Things I'm gonna apologize for ahead of time. I'm gonna probably have a little bit of a ruddy nose because yeah, it's kind of chilly out. Other thing is, I'm sorry if I bumped the camera. That's probably uncomfortable to hear right now. Okay. 49 degree water. So fish this channel. There's a bay up there. Let's work our way to the bay. And, well, in an ideal world, we'll be catching this fish. But we'll see what ends up showing itself. i get my hands a minute here. Yeah, let's start with this stuff. I've never fished here before. Um, Great. Just launched a bunch of these gulps. Sorry, these are power baits, not gulps. So I've got some gulps with me too. Um, but yeah, let's start with small profiles. I did have something tied on. Okay, that's a Mr. Crappie. Got that hook's a little bent out, but that's okay. Let's try. All right. Hmm, seems like an important area. Just got like a sandbar and a little bit of a bay here. Uh, really, I'm just looking for some warmer water. And uh, I'll start by throwing this guy. Hopefully catch something we can eat. A couple crappie would be nice, but I doubt we'll see drum here, but you never know. Hmm. Okay, it's pretty, it's beautiful out, wow. It's cold though, man, you see that gray sky? It's the gray sky of winter. I went over some brush piles just now. All right. Saw something roll down there. I'm sure we'll see a few boats today too. So I guess I'll just work a quarter mile stretch here. And we'll see what happens, man. That's an eighth ounce jig I just plopped out there.
I work everything really slow. So the creek I came out of definitely colder than out here. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's just do like two, three blind casts. Nothing happens there. Just keep moving a little bit. Like I said, this bay does seem like it would be a warmer flat. I don't know how deep it all is. I'm sitting in 12 feet here. But based on my knowledge of nothing. There, are, there is bait rolling around here. I think that's bait. So... Let's work it. Oh, there's a bunch of fish under me. Unless those are trees. See that? Let's get our jig under that. Didn't bite. Why didn't you bite? Okay, there's some fish here. <laughs> they don't seem like they want to bite. <coughs> Excuse me. Not a good sign.
fish rolling around. Hmm. Okay, whatever I'm doing is not going to work here. Let's take that, put it down. Maybe some scent, heavier scent. Not gonna lie, sometimes I don't know the difference. I wouldn't say I don't know the difference, but is Berkeley Power Bait better than Gulp Alive? So uh, typically in saltwater, do better on the, the Gulp products than the Power Bait. But I'm not sure if that same concept really holds true in freshwater too. Only one way to find out and understand it. Just throw a couple of these jokers around. So this battery is going to power over off, uh, I'd say in one hour. So you'll hear a click, that's the battery powering off, and a, another obnoxious click. So probably gar. That are just rolling around there. Could be gizzard chad too, right? Okay, so this 10 foot stuff, I am seeing a few fish roll around, but I've not gotten a bite. Hmm. Yeah, this fish kind of rolling everywhere. You know the saying, life attracts life. So if you find some fish, you should probably find something you want to catch nearby, right? Okay. There's a nice drop off there for sure. Have a fish on here? I do. Crappie? Yeah. Small guy. Hey, we're on to something. Thanks for biting, pal. You're definitely way too small to keep, but I like that encouragement. Okay, that guy ate this little three inch gulp minnow. I guess he hit it on the drop. I can't tell. I don't think the crappies are definitely, they're nowhere near a spawning mode, so these deeper holes would be where they'd be at, I think. But the key is, can we find some larger ones? You know, oops. Some 10, 12, 13 inches would be awesome. I'm guessing a lot of them will be small. They love those gulp minnows though, man. Fish looking at my jig right now.
Okay, I got a fish under me. Let's see if he eats. Gar. These are gar. Okay. Like I said, life brings life. One bite so far. Some, I think that was a bass on that shoreline there, so thinking we go check that out. Okay. Hmm. I guess stripers can be here too. I wouldn't bank on it, but you never know. So it looked like there was some fish in that deeper water, but maybe we gotta go shallow. Not sure if this is a fish camp I just cast it at. Looks like it. Maybe a hunting club. Could be both in as well. I don't know about yellow perch here. I know we got some of those yellow perch somewhere here. Raccoon perch, whatever you want to call them. Maybe these are mullet. I'm like having a look at my, my jig right now. But it could be gar.
Hmm, it's interesting. Well, this won't be a great video, guys. I apologize. Been at this for probably 10, 15 minutes with one dink crappie and a few fish showing up on the sonar sporadically. But no bites, really. All right, that gulp minnow just got that one bite. Try Mr. Crappie and a paddle tail. This thing's got incredible action. Got fish on our, our screen pretty consistently. Hmm. What will happen for a bite? I'll power off when I make a move. I mean, it won't be a huge move. That looks like a gar out there. It won't be a huge move. But when I do make a move, I'm going to power off. Not a good start, but I can see a little bit more action out here. A little bit of growth. <laughs> Look at that. Little jig there. That was on a Mr. Crappie. Oh no, oh no. It's something far larger than we thought it was going to be. Oh, okay, okay. For some reason, it took me a second. I almost blinked and thought that was a snakehead. I don't know why. For some reason. This bowfin's pattern looks kind of closer to a snakehead, but definitely not a snakehead. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, that's a wiggly fish. He's got his, his red drum spot. Under my seat. Pretty fish. Okay, that was uh, still sharp. Boy, that was a battle on this thing. Just thinking it was going to be another crappie. It's 
so that might be what I'm seeing rolling here. I've never fished here before, so I honestly have, <laughs> I don't know. I assume gar when I see rolling fish, or maybe bait, like gizzard shad. But it could be these, these bowfin coming up to, excuse me, um, breathe some air. That's one crappie, one bofin so far. I don't know if I really want to catch bofin too badly, but since I just did a day of bofin fishing, but it is February, so. It'll help me learn a lot, as usual. Up that on my screen that looks like bait crappie marks are usually much heavier than that as in they do show up quite a bit on a sonar Well, the good thing is there is a little bit of life, right? So, what should we do here? Let's relocate a little bit. Maybe we can head up. It gets a little narrower up there. Maybe there is some more crappie life out in this bay there. I think what we're going to do is, I think I just want to cruise for, oh, i got some marks coming in here. These are eight feet down. Crappie always look up, so. Yeah, just kind of where that jig disappears. There are fish on the bottom here too. Okay, that's my jig right now. Hmm, all right, let's cruise around a little bit. It's gonna be hard to figure out. I'm sorry, this will probably not be a fast-paced video with lots of fish, you know, every two seconds. I'm not turning on the power assist just yet. Hmm. All right, make a few casts here. I think I might power off and run up there quick. I could come back here. It does look like there is some life here. Maybe finding like a six foot, you know, this is all 10 feet it seems like. So I think I want to find something maybe like six feet, a little shallower. I feel like that's where I might find something more aggressive. I don't know. I'm just, this is the point in the video where I'm just gonna ramble until hopefully something comes together here. I mean, I could slow troll. I don't think I really wanna do that, but maybe I could do that.
All right, let's do a little slow trolling until we see something really interesting. Unplug my kill switch. Yeah, there are fish growing in this stuff. I don't know. Only having that, that moment, I have no idea what to do. Analysis paralysis. I'm definitely like a morning fisherman too, so like I always expect the best bite to happen right now. It could be a critical error I'm making because this is winter. And one thing that's not around today is sun. But that southwest wind's supposed to kick up this afternoon a bunch, so I'm gonna go let the dogs out. Dog. Let the dog out. Got a pack for the Everglades, so gotta make it happen this morning. I mean, I've got fish under me pretty consistently, actually. These don't want to bite. Okay, okay. All right, every bite so far has been casting, right? So let me not waste time trying to vertical jig these fish under me. There's no current, they're in an off mood. Maybe later they're gonna bite vertically, but right now they want I guess they want a presentation cast at them. Hmm, I think those are both in. I wonder if these both in really mark up on the sonar. That might be what I'm marking. I don't know. I haven't been around both in long enough to know. Your guess as good as mine. I don't think I was on the bottom for that. That would be bite number three though. So it's not terrible but definitely not much going on. That fish was shallower though. Hmm. Got some grass too. Guessing probably 10 feet there. I don't think there's really a sandbar or anything.
Okay. Right, there's definitely some grass and debris down there. Probably not ideal for the presentation I'm going for. Look, still sharp. Still fish under me here. I will make a move in a second. Looks like there's a lot of fish here that are uh, not really interested in much. Let's make our first move. I'm going to head up there. See if we find any warmer water. We put a new battery in. And let's go fishing. Pop, pop. Right, I started marking fish here. Hmm. A little bit more tied too, so let's see. Man, my hands are cold. I'm supposed to get up to 60 today. It doesn't feel like it. This time of year is really afternoons can be beautiful. But I really sometimes just can't fish afternoons, unfortunately. It's a lot deeper back here, so I don't know. And the water is colder, I think. I like that flat. I feel like that flat would be where fish would go. Warm up mid-morning. Who knows? This water's colder back here, so I think I need to probably pull the plug on this idea immediately. Who knows? I'm marking a few fish here. Nothing crazy. Picked up some grass.
I think I picked a very difficult task here. Not seeing any signs of life. here and I'm out of this zone too then. I guess I'm gonna go back there. I don't know, the water is definitely colder here. 50. That flat was warmer. It was warm yesterday so my, my brain is just pushing me right back there. Whether I'm right or wrong it's pushing me there. I think that was another crappie. I don't know. It didn't fight much. But those both in, don't seem like they, they do much until they're right at the kayak. There's definitely a bite there. Okay, okay. Eighth ounce jig and 15 feet of water. I don't know, that probably takes 10 seconds to get down there. Not too long. Got some life here. These look like a nice sized fish, whatever these are.
going to run up to that dock up there. It's probably as far on this end I'm going to go. There is some life here too. I think I want to find 10 foot flats. Flats, flats, flats. This is a little shallower. That might be what we need more. I think that's 15, 20 foot channels. Not right now. Oh yeah, there's definitely fish here. another fin. <laughs> this is fun. Got what 15 pound leader there? 10 or 15. Okay, let's get this liquor brought him. This is what we're gonna catch today, primarily. Listen, I'll catch a, a dozen bowfin and a just a crappie or two for dinner. That's what my day happens to be. It'll be fine too. Let's try to swing them. Okay. okay. I don't know if I'm gonna measure. I'll start measuring them when I when I feel like I got like a 26 inch. These do tend to be kind of the size I'm seeming to bump into, but man, they're still plenty of fun. Um, I don't have much experience with them. I'm sure one day I'll be like, okay, I'm over these guys, but as of right now, I'm really enjoying fishing for them. Okay, okay, so got those fish here too then. That's an eighth ounce jig head, uh, two inch Mr. Crappie paddle tail. I'm guessing these guys are everywhere. Yeah. A few people fish for them, kind of like for fun. Um, you know, serious bass anglers, I'm sure can't stand them. The crappie fishing, I'm sure you can't stand them. They'll mangle all those crappie jigs up. I'm sure you're fishing live bait, they're really hard to get through. So. So one crappie, two bowfin landed. I guess we're in about 45 minutes of this video now. I'm guessing there's a lot of both in here. Oh no, what's that fish? That's okay, a large one pass. Yeah, finding this 10 foot flat is probably gonna be good. This might be what it's all about, just finding the, the zone. I do have a question to, if you're watching here from North Carolina, 
Uh, well, I know there are yellow perch in some of these tributaries. Some of them don't have them. I think really the only two fish I'd probably keep from here would be a good sized crappie or two and yellow perch, if they are here. Or white perch, but I don't think we have white perch in these tributaries, or they're very rare if they are here. Honestly, the reason I probably wouldn't even, not crazy about keeping catfish or both in a lot of new health advisories coming out in the last year or two have been pretty, uh, yeah, it's just shame. That's all. It's like, oh, it's just sad. question is, how, do I just cover water pretty efficiently? Maybe I won't find schools of fish. Just throwing these jigs kind of. You know, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving might be a better move. Be nice to catch that 30 inch bowfin. Let's keep moving to like the next uh, next ten foot area. Seems like don't don't spend too much time in the, in the zone. Make a couple casts, try to get a bite or two. Keep going. Yeah, get some grass too. Sure, over here. I'm sure, there's quite a bit of this stuff in the summertime. Got a bunch of fish here.
Okay, that's kind of interesting. It's like one, two. Yeah, I'm picking a lot more grass up here though. I don't know if that's good or bad. One more cast here. Let's cast in the middle. It's probably back to that 10, 15 foot stuff. So there's definitely a lot more uh, vegetation on the bottom here versus back there, where it didn't seem like I had a whole lot of that. Yeah, vegetation here for sure. thought a little crappie jig could be so hard to take out. Oh, this jig's ruined now. That's okay, I guess. I'll tell you what, if you're watching this, if you're still watching this, rather, <laughs> and you're like, man, I do want to learn how to jig. I'll tell you what, these fish seem are pretty good practice at it. How is he not coming off? That barb isn't that big. Here we go. Come on. Can I get this jig, this plastic out of your mouth? Oh, man, what a mess. <laughs> what a mess these fish are. Man, they have such strong grips. That's nuts. That's so crazy. I'm gonna have to like spit that out so I can let you go. No, it won't work. You're not an easy fish to handle. There we go, there we go, there we go. Oh man, that guy doing that freaking clamp. He's kind of like snakes. That's really what they are. There we go. Okay. Can't leave you, let you swim off with that in the water. Now, did I completely shred up this leader? Eh, definitely shred my hook, trying to fish that out. I'm surprised that barb was jammed in there like that. Hmm. So that was an eighth ounce. These are too heavy. Or 16th. Okay. There's an eight pound one right here. So I also picked this location to, um, to do an unedited video because I thought the probability of bumping into somebody in the winter time here would be pretty low. Sure, a couple guys might bass fish, but to just kind of goof around and throw jigs everywhere like a kook, probably no one. And honestly, these days, I really don't care about what bite is going on necessarily. I'm more interested in just you know trying something different, probably getting skunked, and <laughs> it's a little longer tagging than I would normally leave but I don't think it's gonna matter here but yeah that's kind of the fun of this all it's really who know super lucky I've figured out a way to fish for a living I guess but at the same time 
want to keep fishing is like fishing, right? I don't want it to turn into this, I don't know, assembly line style. Like, I don't know if I, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm burnt out. That's definitely not the word I'd want to use, but I want to keep fishing like the, the joy of it, but also the sides of it that are just, I don't know, they aren't getting, they don't get thrown out there a whole lot. Or just enjoying it differently like we're in a beautiful setting with no wind cold as heck don't get me wrong but like this is also awesome in its own way and yeah you know no drones flying over my head <laughs> i'll have a crew of four bro four mega bros we're all trying to catch the biggest fish for the the best thumbnails you know what i'm saying like, there's these things that doing this is really fun and it's, yeah, I don't know how to verbalize it. Like, this is, this is how you learn so many just new tricks in different bodies of water, you know. But it depends how you like to fish. You know? We live in a time now where traveling and fishing is so much easier. Google Maps and stuff like Navionics and strike lines and all that stuff. It's made, be, it's made becoming a, a, a traveling angler so much easier than before. Right? And I don't really like scour social media for spots. I just jump on Google Maps, load up a depth chart, depth chart excuse me, and we're, we're in it. You know what I'm saying? So, i got some life under me here. I don't know what else could be here. So we got crappie. So I haven't had a bite vertical yet. They've all been casting. So probably reaction strikes. Take another crank up. So I think this power bait just kind of wiggles the current a little bit here. So yeah, I'm guessing that's a both and but who knows. Could be a, a log just kind of down there too. Whatever he is, we got him. He eventually, oh, it is a crappie. Heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. Okay. Should we keep that one? Yeah, kind of like the idea of having a crappie for dinner. I'm going to keep one or two of these guys. He's a little small, but you know, they don't get that big in most of some of these creeks, but that's not a bad one. Yeah. Got to look at the regulations. I think it might, there might not be, a, might be eight inches. Let's see what we got here. He's 10, I'll keep him. All right, well, he's a little better than I thought, 11 inches. Yeah, that's definitely a keeper. Let's keep one or two of these guys for dinner. I'm not gonna keep a whole bucket full. Um, over 11 inches around here, maybe, maybe. Got some ice back here. Oh, oh. It's kind of what we set out for on the day. Of these guys. I think two is going to be good. Drop that back down. Yeah, I'm always sorry. I know I got to learn how to not grab my uh, my face shield. It's like a scarf I wear. Uh, I wear that, so first of all, grab the snot coming off my nose. <laughs> that sounds gross. But the other reason too is, um, sometimes they get cold. <laughs> but I think it might just at this point be an OCD kind of thing. And now that I'm doing an unedited video with you guys, 
Yeah. Eleven inches is definitely a, a keeper size crop. It might be eight inches. It might be nothing. I, I honestly didn't look. Um, I think I got a few more under me here. We're not, I'm not sure. This might not be more, but let's make one or two more casts. And hopefully you're enjoying this. Like I said, I've never fished here. I've actually never gone through where I'm at right now before. So. Tidal water. Definitely fresh water though. But there there's definitely tidal movement here. Like you could there is I could try to show you later. Like right now there's a, a line where the water will probably be up for high tide. So an 11 inch crappie, that's not too bad. Yeah, and I just want one or two fish for dinner, honestly. I don't need many. And probably, you know, just keeping a couple crappie out of these waters for the year makes more sense versus trying to get a bunch of them. Not sure how much I, no health advisories where I'm fishing, but at the same time, A lot of these waterways are connected, so. All right, let's keep moving. So maybe those crappies like being around this dead vegetation. I think that's what this is on the bottom here. I'm guessing this just like fuzzy layer is dead vegetation. Okay. Maybe not, I don't know. That's a power bait, three inch one. I like these things a lot, I do. Yeah, one of the tough strategies always to figure out is do you keep moving, do you stay? What do you, what do, you do when it comes to this sort of stuff? There's quite a few fish out here though. <laughs> I don't know what they are, they could all be bovin, but my goodness, there's quite a few fish. First battery died. These batteries last about an hour. I said I was gonna change it earlier than I didn't. So my apologies. But the other thing I was thinking, um, gives me a nice break to use the bathroom. <laughs> so I think there's some life here. I want to go back into this creek a little more. I do have to check the time though. Nine o'clock. Uh, probably could give this another hour, hour and a half. So I stop there and no more.
It looks like it's a new dock. Maybe a year or two tops. But we haven't had a bite out here. So let's go up one more bend. Take it from there. Yeah, there are some scattered fish here, I think. Maybe not so new. Well, there are a few fish over here, so. Mark them here. Could be more both in though. I'm pumped. I'm like, oh, so it really, yeah, it seems like not spending too much time in the zone. Smart. I'm sure I could catch some fish under that dock, but <laughs> let me, let me leave it alone. It seems like there's enough scattered life that I don't have to beat up somebody's dock necessarily. I think we're gonna get away from that dude cutting down the tree, man. Wouldn't say it's totally killing the vibe, <laughs> but. Just a little bit. There is some life here, though. Got something looking at my jig here. I'm surprised we didn't get a channel catfish yet. I actually just realized one fish that it, yeah, obviously should be plentiful. It's definitely a fish looking at my jig. All right, one more cast, and I guess I'll go back the other way. I'm not seeing much rolling over here, though. I think the water is colder. I'm seeing, like, consistent 49. Back there was definitely pushing closer to 51, so...
Plus, we don't want to hear that noise, right? And yeah, I always feel like life brings life. So let's say there's a bunch of both in there. Yeah, I think everything is kind of nearby each other. That's probably the best stable environment right now. <coughs> where the uh, where the water's a little warmer. There's not much current there. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense to me. A lot of those fish will stay in those environments quite a bit. Just try a couple casts up on this flat here. I think I saw both in roll there, so try not to scare everything. Yeah, those flats seem to be key too. Yeah, I don't see, yeah, there's definitely a lot of, quite a bit more growth. It's interesting too, is I don't see too much grass. It's the only pass, patch of grass I've seen. I think I know where I kind of want to, like I said, let's get away from the noise. All right, I don't think I've had a bowfin on this yet. I think I'm starting to mark a couple fish again. But like I said, let's go where the water's warmer. We'll, we'll find more aggressive fish in that as we get back up towards 50. Like I said, as I was getting back there, I was dropping below, you know, 49, etc. And these are scattered fish on the bottom. You know, you've seen enough of that, you should stop, right? Those probably were, I don't know, not marking them now, but the, whatever they are, they're in this channel. Don't look very large either. Just popped off my. 
Yeah, these are small. They're something, but they seem to be pretty small to me. Who knows? I'm sure there's some gizzard shad and stuff like that too here. Seems like these crappies I don't have a problem hitting that, that larger profile this time of year. Yeah, I'm going through stuff again. All right, let's try to hit some stuff we haven't hit yet. been here yet. Hit this side. Let's try this bank quick. Bank's really deep. I don't like that. I think we want that shallower bank because this is all 14 feet. It's probably got a sharp drop too, is my guess. Make one or two casts here. anything here really either. Okay. Alright, just one nice long cast. This is like really slow it down fishing for sure.
I'm not getting as many bowfin on the straight tail, like the paddle tail was getting bit quite a bit more regularly. And I think uh, for the interest of not putting you, you guys to sleep, we're gonna go back to the paddle tail. <laughs> Just to get a few more bites, right? Otherwise, I think I'm going to put everyone to sleep with this. I do have this gulp right here too. I'll just a few more casts with that too. It's interesting, it's a little, a little quieter than I thought it'd be. Like, thought as I was getting back into that 51 and start bumping into those both in again, etc. Those are crappie, they should bite pretty much instantly. That was a huge school of something. School of bait went through. It's tricky, it's tricky, it's tricky. Get it done now. Come on. Come on, man. See some, some rolling around up there. By the way, it doesn't seem like there's much here. 
so let's yeah I think we got to use our electronics a little more than we're we assumed we might have seems like everything I am yeah, is seeing some surface signs and then I'm reinforcing it with what I'm seeing in this this channel I think that was a brush pile. I haven't seen many brush piles here in the middle of this channel, so maybe this one's got something on it. Maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Losing confidence here. I'm losing confidence. I feel like I, I built confidence for a second, then now I'm losing it. Oof. That was another school of fat bait. I think it's some kind of school. Schools of Shiners, maybe, something like that. I think what I started doing is I started moving my jigs too fast again.
think there's, there's, there's a push to the shallows right now. I really don't want to feel like that way, but I'm just not seeing, I haven't had a bite deeper now, a little bit. Notice that hook's a little bent. Is the hook point dull? No. turtle on the surface there. Okay, okay. We had a start. <laughs> what happened here? 30 minutes of nothing. A little action for a few minutes. Whew. Saw a few fish here again in 12 feet or so. I think I need a fresh start. Like my brain is not picking this apart right right now properly anymore. I need to like move to a totally different area. Maybe go back to the first area where we or at least caught our first bowfin and smaller crappie. For some reason I'm not really putting this together anymore. Alright, I see life here I do. Okay. Need a bite. Give me a bite again. <laughs> Just get some, get some confidence going again. Could be a bowfin. That's fine. Alright, this zone is just not happening. Power off for a second.
sonar was pretty empty though. Feel like I've lost all confidence in what to do now. A couple fights earlier, and now, not sure. I'm gonna cover a little more water with this quarter ounce jig, I think. It's 18 feet, a little deeper. I'm not seeing any surface life now. Like, what happened? Slack tide? Could it be? Incoming tide? <laughs> yeah, no bites. Okay. This might be more tidal than a, in terms of a, in terms of getting bites, this might be more tidal than I imagined. That's another bowfin though. Right? Yeah, it's got it. Maybe a cat. Definitely a nicer one. Really don't know if I want to net these fish. They seem like they'll they'll tear up a net pretty good. The question is where did I put my lip gripper? This is the side of a video, you know get to see too much. Me trying to figure out where everything is. Some people call these blackfish locally. Get a lot of regional different names. Gosh. Man, if, I think if this thing bites you, it's gonna be awful. Like that is a very powerful jaw it's got. All right, that's not a bad fish actually. Yeah, that's all I'm thinking of myself. Lip grippers. Okay. 
you know what? These fish can handle being out of the water for a second without what, batting an eye. What's the biggest one gonna be for today? All right, so about 24 is the size to beat so far. Hang on, I gotta wipe, wipe that lens. Sorry about that. Okay. Second fish vertical now. Maybe I gotta start fishing vertical. Haven't lost too many jigs today. Okay, what else can we? Try gulp swimming mullet. Hmm. Let's try the white power bait. A couple of fish here floating around. The quarter ounce jig head's a little heavier. Now this fish down here, see all that? I hope you can. Oh man. I think some of these might be crappies, I don't know why. few fish kind of scattered here though they are showing up my electronics Boy, this is hard. A lot harder than you'd think, actually. Both in our uh, good practice, man. 
especially cold water, learning how fish react in cold water sometimes. This is amazing for that. I'm almost starting to wonder if maybe this three inch uh, bait is a little too large. Maybe going back to two inch is gonna be better. Either way, let's keep moving. fish here. They're spooky, man. They hear that kayak, I think. Whatever that was, was spooky. 16 feet, they're gone. The battery went down there. Man, I ran over a school of fish that <sighs> spooky. So I'm looking at my jig. Excuse me. Hmm. <laughs> this is frustrating. I think there's two fish looking at my jig now. I don't know if these are both and these look like they could be crappies though. <sighs> I think that was a crappie. Very soft hit. <laughs> Scared him. <laughs> oh,
got like at least three fish under me here. Fascinating. <laughs> oh, man. How long will a bite take on that? Let's see, it's probably like a school of two, three crappies there. That's how long you waste on a school of crappies. <laughs> it's not really a school. I think that's just one or two fish. But I wasted a lot of time there. I wouldn't say I wasted it, but what I'm trying to get at is I spent a lot of time just looking at my sonar, seeing those two fish. I'm gonna just bounce this jig back to them. I'm sure I'll pick up a bowfin instead doing that. But I felt that tap, that was definitely a bite of a crappie. Do you say crappie or do you say crappie? I've been told both ways are wrong <laughs> when I use that, that terminology. People who get, get mad, I say the word crappie, they say that's a crappie. Or when you say crappie, that's a crappie. Crappie. Both are wrong. Okay, I get it. It looks like there's quite a few fish out here. That's, that's a, a man the bowfin right now. Or a gar, perhaps. I'm sure there's gar and bowfin here. Life brings life, though. Looking forward to that sunny Florida weather though. This is brutal. Thankfully there's no wind. Wow, we got a lot of fish here too. These look bigger. Man, not many bites now. Getting into that mid-morning stuff, I would think bite pretty good, but.
that's the one. Ton of fish here. Come on. Fish don't want to bite. I think these are crappies. Some guys I know, when I used to crappie fish a little more, they put just put their freaking baits in the rod holder. But, because it's not, that wasn't a crappie. Because <laughs> um, all the bouncing from the kayak would give that jig enough action. You know what I'm saying? That was a boat from that. Yeah, you get enough action from the from the jig just bouncing from the kayak's um, movement. You can just literally put them in the rod holder, catch fish that way. Especially these kind of these wavy baits, like you know, Mr. Crappies and power baits, striped bass too. Actually, back in the day, you do quite a bit of that too. That was both and too aggressive of a bite.
Hoppy fights definitely much softer than the bowfin, <laughs> as you would guess. Oh man, I'm spending a lot of time effing around instead of catching fish. Gosh, when these guys look, clamp clamp their jaws, look at that. Good thing power bait is biodegradable, I believe. Actually, I think it might be just the Berkeley Gulp. So, I really rather not. Um, leave that power bait in the water here. Why don't you want to spit out that gulp? You literally... Seriously, a clamp of death on these things. These guys in snakeheads are so, like, in some ways, they definitely fish differently, but, um... There we go. Definitely, snakeheads are the ones that do love their, their redfish-style spot, though. Um, the snakeheads definitely are the ones that are the eaters, right? Okay, that jig head, this is a BKK um, quarter ounce. It did kind of fold it up a little bit, you can see. But the two X strong hooks, these are, are decent. Um, not the best, but they are decent. Another power bait on there. So yeah, as I was saying earlier though, you never, you always were like, oh man, 
want to get better at jigging. Find yourself some both and to, to work over the winter months. Man, these are great to, to practice on. They're, they're challenging enough. I mean, they aren't biting every cast and they're, they're wanting particular cold water presentations. That could be a crappie midwater calm. I feel like that is. So let's, uh, maybe they think I'm a tree stump. gone. I think I gotta try to open that hook up a little bit more. This water's pretty clear. A lot clearer than you'd think after compared to most of the areas around here right now. another move though. Clock's running out, so we hit a lot of this stuff quick and start marking my way in. Now we're just, I'm going to really aggressively fish through here. This flat's probably got a bunch of them sitting on it warming up. down. I haven't lost too many baits yet today actually, just a couple.
time here. 10, 10. Yeah. 20 minutes. We'll be out of here, guys. We hit this like patch of shoreline here and then we'll call it. Shortly after that. Okay, there's a bunch of fish there too stacked on top of each other. Are they all both in? I don't know. This is where I caught that first small crappie. Cut here, man. I wonder how deep these bowfin actually go. It's 18 feet. I'm sure there's some 25, 30 foot holes even up here around this creek bend. I wonder if those have those fish too.
Interesting. Not seeing too many of them here. Few. Yeah, there's a couple rolling up there too, I think. These both and don't seem to be hitting this pink color. It seemed like white was getting bit quite a bit. And kind of similar to my experience from the other day, white and chartreuse. There isn't much structure here. It's pretty like flat bottom bay. But maybe I got a fish a little closer to these trees too. Let's put that away for a second. Back to this this guy here. Maybe that chartreuse color is what's going to do it. Here you definitely have both gar and bofin. This water's definitely warmer here though. Fifty one. grass here too. Doesn't seem like much over here. I'm not like not marking a whole lot.
Now I'm marking some stuff. Alright, not working right now, but it's not easy. Alright, so power bait didn't really get too many bites in the last hour or two. Let me just try this stuff really quick. swimming mullet here. It's like one of my favorite. One of the best lures out there when the when there isn't like many tail biters like pinfish. Okay. We gotta get out of here. Let the dog out. Packed for the Everglades. Boy, oh boy. Either way, a lot less bites than you'd think. This was hard. This was not easy. All right, let's hit that one point where we had a couple more bites quickly and call it a day. Quick power off. Yeah, I can't figure this out. <laughs> Not for the life of me. These both fins stopped biting. Uh, there hasn't been another, like, other fish in the mix. So, it's winter. Winter's grass is still on, still on display. That's for sure. So this will be my last cast. I put a new battery in. The last one fizzled out in about 30 minutes, so kind of quick. Mm. Well, hopefully you can learn something with me and somewhat enjoyed this. Um, gotta learn how to talk a little more. <laughs> Not great at it. Quiet guy. I hope I had something. Something of value there. 
hit this one little last point here. Call it a day. What did we catch today? Two crappies, what, six, seven bowfin? In about three hours? That's, that's tough. I'll be the first to admit that. It was tough. All right. Probably need a sunny day. If we want to catch a lot of these bowfin up in here right now. It's a cloudy day, even though it's pretty warm out. That sun is really important, I guess, for a good winter day's fishing. Because right now, I haven't had a bite in a little while. And the bites were all tough to come by, man. Like, marked a lot of fish today. And I'm guessing most of them are gar, maybe small channel catfish. Like, uh, we had a couple bites vertical like this, and it's just been such a struggle to get those fish to bite when they're coming up to look at the bait. Then kind of turning away. Okay, I'm more or less wrapping it up. Uh, it's probably about two, two, three hours worth of fishing since that last battery cut out. Um, plenty of bowfin around. They're they're really hard. Um, I don't know if it's that sun. <laughs> it could be. Either way, the lack of sun rather. Um, borders 50, 50 and a half, 51. Uh, either way, learning experience for sure. I think they're scattered everywhere for the most part, these bowfin. Um, that's good practice. Because uh, they're a lot harder. Let me put on cruise control so I'm not spinning around. They're a lot harder than you. I mean, I don't know if they're always hard. They're probably easy a lot of the time. Hang on. I found them to be harder than I think people give them credit for. Because, um, you know, you can always get the sound bite that both men are dumb. I'm sure they get their moments where they're, they're pretty forgiving and easy to catch, but um, based on how that went today, I thought that was pretty difficult. But that's good practice. Like um, between the, the roadside ditch last week, you know, last week the other video, and doing this today, like saltwater fish do the exact same thing these bowfin do, as in they get kind of in an off mood. And I think there was a few schools of crappie around. Um, couldn't get uh, you know any of those going, but I kind of you know was bouncing around. I, I don't know. I wasn't focused, and I've never fished here before, so. That's the combination of that. Um, that's drier, that's slower. I'll think of it like coming with me fishing for the day, right? So, no tree stumps or anything to hit right now. So, cruising on speed five. 
kayak this one is the Old Town EPDL. And I'm guessing if you're anyone who's watching, you know I've been on this for a little while. Um, I use it a lot, I do. Uh, all the gear. Um, really the main rod we're throwing, throwing jigs with today was this little St. Croix uh, uh, ultralight medium power. Uh, got it on a tiny, tiny little Daiwa. I think it's a Daiwa 500. Oh man, I don't remember the name of it. It's a $40 reel and I put six pound suffix uh, nano braid on that. Um, it's cold though. I'm feeling it into my, through the dry suit. Like it's supposed to get into the 60s. Maybe when that sun comes out and all that stuff, but I've got stuff to do. I learned, um, I have a crappie for lunch, just one. My wife's out of town, so just one's, one's gonna do it. They are one of my favorite fried fish out there. So uh, looking forward to that. I think they'll probably, I don't know what they do here in the Carolinas, but uh, most of my experience with them is when that water gets to about 55 somewhat consistently, they'll push shallow and do their spawn. Um, below 55, they can be kind of fickle and be in off moods quite frequently. But I don't know what they do here, honestly. There's Every place is different. And I haven't focused on them a whole lot. I know, um, you know, 15-inch ones are, are harder to come by in some of these creeks. And are pretty rare, actually. But to get um, some 10, 11, and 12-inchers in the future, maybe I can try to, you know, do one or two of those videos. I do enjoy learning all the, the other stuff, too, besides the salt. So, and it's, uh, you know, that's all content. Salt content. <laughs> saltwater content when I'm not lazy about it I'm just um you know at the same time you know if it's not performing because it's the same stuff over and over that makes plenty of sense to me so got to try some different stuff and well ultralight fishing yeah it's a lot of fun so appreciate everyone who made it to the end here I gotta go home I'm cold and I gotta let my dog out and I gotta get packed for Florida so next video we'll see you in Florida